day, everyone. For this video lecture, I will be introducing the competing perspectives about globalization. However, for this specific video, I will only discuss one perspective and will upload another video for the other perspectives on globalization. To start with, let us define what globalization is. Accordingly, globalization is defined as 1. A multidimensional set of social processes that create, multiply, stretch, and intensify worldwide social interdependencies and exchanges. It is also defined as the international integration of market of goods, services, and capital. And it is also defined as the intensification of worldwide social relations which link distant localities in such a way that local happenings are shaped by events occurring many miles away and vice versa. In simple terms, globalization simply means the interconnectedness of social, political, and economic relations across the globe. Now, in the examination of contemporary globalization, there are several inquiries that scholars aim to answer. Among others are the following. Number one, what is the impact of globalization on the power of national government? Two, what are the factors shaping globalization? And three, what is the end or outcome of globalization? So there are several competing views or theories that try to give rejoinders to the foregoing questions. And these views or theories are the following. Number one, we have hyperglobalism. Number two, we have skepticism. And number three, we have transformationalism. However, as mentioned, I will only focus one perspective for this video, and that is hyperglobalism. So, what is hyperglobalism? Hyperglobalism is a perspective in international relations that emphasizes the increasing interconnectedness and interdependence of nations through global processes and institutions. Globalization, according to this view, is understood as the natural consequence of growing transborder flows, the denationalization of national markets, and the rise of global economy. In other words, it postulates that globalization denationalized human affairs. To proceed, what is the hyperglobalist thesis? Hyperglobalists contend that globalization is an unprecedented phenomenon, different in scale and scope from previous waves of international integration. Why is that so? Because for hyperglobalists, the contemporary era of globalization has brought a different level of interconnectedness that transcends national boundaries and reshaped the world order. In fact, according to Wanda Vraste, in her paper entitled The Politics of Globalization, she argued that globalization is a radical break with the past and an unprecedented moment in human history. According to her, the rise of a global economy, the emergence of global governance institutions, and the hybridization of traditional cultural units signals the beginning of a new global order, one in which nation-states are little more than the transmission belts for global capital. Now, let's answer using the lens of hyperglobalism the questions on globalization. So first, what is the impact of globalization to the powers of the national government? According to the hyperglobalist view, globalization represents a fundamental transformation in the nature of international relations characterized by the erosion of state sovereignty and the emergence of international organizations. Example, from the economic point of view, the international organizations such as the IMF and World Bank created a new economic order that diminished the role of the nation states. In effect, the nation state is changed from an active and comprehensive government to a less interventionist government. Now, one of the key proponents of this argument is Susan Strange, a prominent international relations scholar. In her book entitled The Retreat of the State, The Diffusion of Power in the World Economy, Strange examines how globalization has transformed the role of nation states. Basically, she argued or contended that 
there has been an erosion of state power, a retreat of the state in the face of globalizing forces. She said that economic globalization in particular has declined the power of states as economic decisions increasingly take place at the global level, influenced by multinational corporations, financial institutions, and the global market forces. Next question, what is the driving force of globalization? Now, according to the hyperglobalist perspective, capitalism, democracy, and international institutions are identified as the key driving forces of globalization. These factors play significant roles in shaping global processes and facilitating the integration of nations into a globalized system. So let's discuss each. First, capitalism. When we see capitalism, it is characterized by the private ownership of resources and also the pursuit of profit. Now, capitalism is seen as a driving force behind globalization. Why? Because it fuels economic globalization by promoting trade liberalization, market-oriented policies, and the expansion of multinational corporations. At present, the global flow of capital, goods, and services is facilitated by capitalist principles, leading to increased economic interdependence among nations. Second, democracy. The hyper-globalist perspective suggests that democratic political systems contribute to the spread and consolidation of globalization. Democratic countries are more likely to engage in international trade, establish international agreements, and participate in global institutions fostering cooperation and connectivity among nations. Finally, we have international institutions. Hyperglobalists emphasize the significance of international institutions such as the World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund, and the United Nations in promoting and regulating global processes. These institutions provide platforms for cooperation, negotiation, and the establishment of rules and norms that govern global economic and political interactions. In other words, international institutions facilitate the smooth functioning of globalization by mediating conflicts, promoting trade liberalization, and in general, addressing global challenges. Finally, what is the outcome of globalization? According to the hyper-globalist perspective, the ultimate outcome or goal of globalization is global integration or the creation of a global village. This concept suggests that as globalization progresses, the world becomes increasingly interconnected, interdependent, and unified, transcending traditional boundaries and fostering a sense of global community. One source that discusses the idea of global integration is the book entitled The Consequences of Modernity by Anthony Giddens. He suggests that the intensification of global interconnectedness and the erosion of spatial and temporal barriers contribute to the formation of a global village where people are interconnected through shared knowledge, culture, and communication. To borrow his words, globalization squeezes sideways, creating new cultural, economic, and political regions that cut across national boundaries. In sum, hyperglobalists suggest that the driving force of globalization are capitalism, democracy, and international institutions. Second, the role of national government in economic and political processes is minimal, if not irrelevant. Its role now will be to facilitate connections among and between different parts of the world through international organizations. And finally, the end of globalization is global integration or the creation of Global Village. Thank you for listening and keep posted for other video lectures regarding the competing views of globalization.